Hello and welcome back, Sleepy What's It here with another miniatures video for you. In today's video we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of the new models and paint sets that came out with 3rd edition Age of Sigmar. As with all of the recent new editions for the mainline games from Games Workshop, they've also released model and paint sets to help uh, new hobbyists get, hit the ground running. Since Dominion and the new edition starter bo boxes focus on the new Stormcast and Cruel Boys models, it, it's of no surprise that they are the models that are included in these paint sets. For the Order faction, the set that they included is the Stormcast Vindicators, and for Destruction, we are supplied with some Cruel Boy Gut Rippas. I'm going to show you the contents of each of these boxes with commentary, along with showing off the assembled models, and then I'm going to do an overall review of the kits and basically if I recommend you getting them. So let's get into this. The first box that we're looking at here is the Stormcast Vindicator box. As you can see from the cover here, these are the new thinner proportion Stormcast with a shield and spear. On the back we get some vague painting instructions and assembly instructions for the models. Unlike the previous ed edition boxes, there's no flap with a bit more instruction on the front. This is all you get. I assume the expectations that you either go and get the Getting Started magazine that I reviewed previously, or you'll go to one of the various Warhammer websites for more instruction. As with many of the previous paint sets, I do plan on making some tutorial videos on these to help people out. Now, actually getting into the box. If you've seen me unbox one of these before, either the previous edition, Age of Sigma, or the 40k ones, you're not going to be particularly surprised with what we get in here. We have this plastic white tray with all the components on it. The trays make a decent surface for catching spills while decanting paint into dropper bottles. Here are the bases, uh, two of, uh, of them which are the newer style with the hexagonal hole for the model to slot into instead of the older style slot connector or just a flat top. Given that these are supposed to be glueless kits, I can understand why they went this way since these connectors seem to hold a little bit better with friction fits than the slotted bases ever did. And here we have the models on sprues. Uh, you get fi two vindicators, one male, one female. I like that they finally fixed the issues with their pauldrons. The older push fit Stormcast models used to have a seam that ran right through the middle of their shoulder and it just would never close tight. I've gotten uh, quite a few views on my videos on how to fix that, but I don't mind them stopping making this obviously flawed design. And here's our standard uh, beginner's brush. This one looks like it actually has a usable point for once, though in general these are kind of trash brushes in my experience. They'll get you through the painting these models if you're lucky, but not much else. Moving on to the paints that begin this set, which is basically the greatest hits of painting standard Stormcast. First here we have Cantor Blue, which is nice, dark, slightly desaturated blue. And then we have our gold metallic Retributor Armor. For white details, we've been provided with Corax White, which is honestly one of the worst paints ever made by GW. For shading, we've been provided with Agarx Earthshade, which is a nice umber wash. Though for gold, I do personally prefer a warmer shade like Greek and Flesh Shade. And for our steel areas, we've been provided with Lead Belcher, the workhorse of GW's Grey Metallic line. And since these models have been supplied on standard flat top bases, um, instead of integrated bases, we've been supplied with sterling mud to use the texture paste on them. I'm going to go quickly assemble these models so that we can show them off in the light box. I overall think the design choices they went with, like adjusting the proportions and such, were good ones. My biggest issue with these models is how the female one uh, actually assembles. The legs are on separate pieces. So to get the torso and legs together, you effectively have to be managing four pieces at once because the legs, uh, how they're attached, isn't keyed. It's just a round peg and a round hole. So you can't be exactly sure if you've got them positioned correctly until you snap the torso around them. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of a pain. Honestly, I, w I wasn't even able to put them together completely cleanly. I had a noticeable gap uh, and uh, on the underside of the models that I just uh, had to run some plastic cement to completely seal it up. Um, like kind of related to this, the shoulders aren't keyed either. So I found there was a bit of play and they could rotate a little bit. So I had to use some plastic cement just to make sure they were secure. But other than th these uh, little assembly issues, I think they're nice models, strong dynamic poses, and they have good uh, sculptural details. Uh, given how the shields attach, um, they can be uh, painted separately, which is always nice. So let's move on to the Cruel Boys box now. So the, the same basic box outside that we had for the Stormcast, just orc themed. A very limited painting instructions on the back, but we do get proper assembly instructions. So moving into the contents of the box. Shockingly, we get another white plastic tray with the contents on it. 
The bases we get for these ones are 32 millimeters, which I think is about right, uh, the right size for these figures. The 40s of the Stormcast uh, come on felt kind of big. Anyway, moving on to the Sproom. Well cast and detailed models, but I can see that the shields are not separate, and there are some seams running through the shoulders and backs and other visible bits. Unfortunately, whoever was in charge of these models didn't get the same memo as the Stormcast designer for fixing some of the mistakes. Here's the obligatory beginner's brush. I have so many of these things. And now onto the paints. Leading off the pack, we have our new green auric flesh, which sits somewhere between War Boss Green and Skarsnick Green on my shelf. I didn't realize there was space for another paint in there, but you know, here we are. For the shields, we have the classic red of Mephiston Mif Red. Uh, for our brownie leathers and such, we've been provided with Steel Legion Drab, which I believe is a first in these kits, if from what I can recall, so I guess a new color. Uh, for all the metallics, you get Lead Belcher, which is, you know, a solid gray metallic. For shading, we get Agrex Earthshade, which is, you know, a pretty good color for getting Swampy Boys all grimy. And then finally, for finishing off the bases, we have another pot of Sterling Mud. So with the contents out of the way, I'm going to assemble the models and throw them in the light box for you. As with the Stormcast, there has been some distinct design language shift in these models. Specifically, these are lankier and more wiry than other Oryx, uh, especially the ones that precede them, which tend to be kind of like big slabs of meat for their aesthetic. I think having a diversity in the line is actually quite good, and I appreciate that they're so visually distinct. Uh, they also nice, uh, contrast nicely with the polished and cleaned look of the Stormcast sculpts. Uh, the assembly leaves something to be desired, as I alluded to before. The shoulder plus arm plus shield assembly things are never my favorite and are a consequence of being a push fit design. Uh, they're a problem because it makes it difficult to paint the model in sub assemblies or at least to detach the shield and paint that separately. I, th I feel shields should always be removable so that you can paint under them and then on their back. Though admittedly, I am quite guilty of thoughtlessly gluing on my shields most of the time and making my life painful for painting. But I, I, that should be my mistake, not a design mistake. They also just have lots of, these models have lots of long seams running through highly visible areas, in my opinion. Some of them were hidden on transitions between materials, but some of them are quite noticeable. Thankfully, I have multiple videos on how to fix seams like that. So now that we've seen the contents of the boxes and the models assembled, let's go into what my opinion of these boxes is. And broadly, I am underwhelmed quite underwhelmed to be honest. If you're just buying one of them and don't have any paint, it isn't a bad deal necessarily, since you do get six paints, some models, and a brush. It's not a great deal though, and you're missing some essential supplies like sprue cutters, uh, since these models aren't designed to be pushed out from the sprue, unlike the magazine ones, and there's no primer or undercoat supplied, so that's another potential extra cost for a new hobbyist. Because they've moved away from integrated bases, they've also are basically, in my opinion, a short a paint since they need to include texture paste. So you don't get a black, which I think is basically essential for these kits. I just basically can't recommend getting one of these kits without picking up a pot of black paint, at least to go with it for undercoating and being able to like fill in like the joints on your storm cast and such. It's just, yeah, just to paint them right, I think you need black for them. I definitely wouldn't buy both of these kits. Unless, of course, you're doing a review video about them, um, since three of the six colors are going to be overlapped, so you're at, uh, out of two kits, you're only going to get nine distinct co uh, colors of paint. Uh, if you're looking to buy both kits, which comes out for to you about ninety dollars Canadian uh, from GW, I would highly recommend looking at their tools and paint set and their Warrior Starter set uh, for Age of Sigmar, because that's going to come out to one hundred and fifteen dollars, and you're going to get way more paints and models along with some beginner rules and dice and such. Like it just, it's to me, it's just so much better bang for your buck uh, going that way. Currently, you can't buy these sprues separately, so I'm not going to suggest you go buy the models and paints uh, separately like I have done for previous editions. I think the majority of people that are going to be uh, probably just going to straight up skip these kits, or at least going with an understanding that there's other new uh, materials they need uh, to get the most out of them. As a beginner on a tight budget, they are technically your lowest cost entry point if you want to figure out if the hobby is for you, but if you're but you're not getting a steal of a deal and you are honestly missing critical parts like the tools to take them off sprues. Um, if you're just trying to figure out if miniature hobbying in general is a thing you want, not necessarily AJ uh, Sigmar specifically, there's I think more cost effective kits from like Reaper and Army Painter and probably by at some point Wiz Kids that would be a better deal than this. 
I really wish they hadn't raised the price uh, from these from $40 to $45, since that just has really killed anything remotely resembling cost effectiveness about them. Um, if you're a slightly less price a conscious beginner or have a little bit more of a budget to work with, I highly recommend looking at the tools and paint set along with the Warrior Starter set, because uh, that just gets you a strictly better uh, collection of things, because you get more paints, no duplicates, tools you're going to need, and more models. And it's only $25 more. So yeah, if you, if you can afford it, go that way. If you're an existing hobbyist and are wanting to dive into Age of Sigmar or maybe these specific factions, I would suggest buying one of the starter boxes that fits your budget and buying any paints you need separately because this is just not a place of deals. Yeah, so overall, I just can't really recommend this to pretty much anyone other than maybe someone that was just specifically wanting to try out painting Age of Sigmar models on the smallest budget possible. And even then, it may be better to get the Age of Sigmar getting started ma uh, magazine and buying some paints and a cheap brush. And honestly, maybe uh, also ma many hobby stars, especially the GW ones, if you express an interest in the hobby, they'll really likely have a, f a mini or two available that you can just try painting out in the store because they want to get new customers. Like that's a pretty common thing. I just, yeah, I really can't recommend these for anyone. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please give the video a like. If you want to see more content like this on miniatures and how to paint them, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel more materially, I can accept that over on Coffee. And other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.